Well, hello everybody on what is the first rainy day in England for a little while. I am Rosanna Rosie Glohannis and this is our equinox and new moon in Libra co-creation meditation. Now, just before I go into that, if you're new to how we work things here, we're going to do a little cacao blessing. And I've actually got a couple of things I'd like to tie up for you to consider. We're going to do the co-creation together live here. And obviously, those of you catch the replay, catch the replay. But I'm going to invite you, if you're catching the replay, to pause when I ask you these questions and actually take some time with them before you do the co-creation. For those of you who are live, we're going to do the co-creation. Um, you'll have a chance to jot some ideas down first. And um, then I'm just going to invite you to do it again, because we're really setting the tone of our vibrational frequency for the next three months. And for those of you who aren't so clear on what I do, I am a channel of divine grace, which means bringing through the frequencies of revelation and sort of aha moments that allow us to see things through different eyes. And once we do forever remain changed, but in a good way in a way that allows us to have more freedom, uh, to feel more empowered, to see clearer in our way ahead. And for everybody who is attracted to my work, I want to say this now, <laughs> it's really important to on, uh, like take this on board, that we are ahead of the curve, ahead of the wave. I've been tested so many times to actually trust this message. And the reason this is so important is we're not going to get the validation we want from the world around us. It's not necessarily going to be the most popular thing at this present time that we see in the collective because we're way showers. We're what I call uh, divine human leaders. We are here as ascended masters in training and we are way showers. We are the bridge between the old world and the new world. And that's why today's focus is particularly around us anchoring the feeling vibration of our personal paradise. Because when you get clear what really excites you, what really helps you to expand, what really allows you to feel in flow, this is what creates the energetic shift that will actually create the world you want more of around you. And it turns the lights on for those around you too. And Typically, you know, what I really want to say the energy we're working with is our creativity, which is our sexual and our fertile and our creative energy. So um, creatives are very attracted to this work, as are coaches, teachers, therapists, um, mentors, influencers, because we're, we're here to tap into our soul consciousness. And that is the journey you're on with me. We go from head to body to heart. And then we can access our soul consciousness. So you're getting a little bit of a taste of what happens when you work with me in a coaching way. And uh, also with the yoga that I offer online on Monday nights, you get more of an opportunity to activate your light body, connect to your earth chakra and soul chakra and receive the downloads that allow you to stay ahead of the curve and to be the leader that trusts your inner authority. We're really coming into a time now where the era of matriarchy and patriarchy have kind of had their time and it is the time of the divine child, which is the era of uniarchy. And I'll speak a little bit to that in a moment, but let's just start with our cacao blessing. So you may have a, a drink with you. It might be ceremonial cacao. It might be water. This blessing will be for everything. And when we start in this way, we start by connecting to our divine spark, and then we bring that into the rest of the session. So let's do that. First of all, I'm sort of working to get myself centre of my portals. <laughs> so you want to start by rubbing your hands together and then reach your arms up. And as you breathe out, bring your hands down to your heart. So if you haven't got a drink with you, then you can just keep your hands here. But if you do have a drink with you, we're gonna pick that up in a moment. Let's just take a moment to feel this connection between the palms of our hands at our heart. So your, your spiritual heart is the center of your chest, not where your physical heart is. And this is where our divine spark resides. Now take a lovely deep breath in and fill yourself up with source because source is in the breath, my friends. Fill yourself right up. 
And then breathe out gently down your body, through your mouth, through your nose, as you see fit. Try that again, breathing in. Filling yourself up. Just allowing your attention to move from your thoughts to your breath, to your body. And you can hold your breath in just for a moment, expanding. And then send your breath down your body as though you're starting to relax your roots down towards the earth. Letting yourself connect with this ground beneath you. Inhale again. Really imagine you're bringing your breath in from source and from the earth, just breathing into the very center of your being. And turn all the lights off. Breathe in even a little bit more and now exhale. Okay, very gently, just circling around your tailbone. So if you're sitting in a chair or on the ground, just let yourself spiral so that your pelvis is moving in a circular motion as you connect from the outer pelvis in towards the pelvic floor, almost like you're stirring a pot of gold beneath you your beautiful golden spoon, which is your tailbone. And then make the movement smaller and smaller until it feels as though you are just dancing on the very tip of your tailbone. Anchoring this tapping root deep into where you're sitting, breathing in again, and now sending your breath down through your tailbone, down into the earth, connecting with your earth chakra, about two, three feet down. It's like plugging into the crystalline grid. Imagine the earth beneath you lighting up all around. And then carry on sending your breath down to the core of Mother Earth. It's like a big, beautiful golden cord it might be many roots extending down trust your imagination and connect deeply to this planet that is our home whilst we're in our bodies and now with your nose draw a circle in the air in front of you creating a portal to step into Go both ways. And then draw your nose down and up, establishing your core line between source and guide. Inhale, chin neutral. Exhale, turn your head to the left and let go of the past. It's not who you are, it's just what you've been through. Take the best, leave the rest, come back to the center. Inhale with your chin forward and now exhale to the right sending the breath of acceptance of positive anticipation into the future what is coming that I can celebrate I can line up with to enjoy inhale center now exhale drop your chin to your heart and this is the perfect time to bring your cup up to your heart. And from this space within, imagine yourself stepping into the sphere in front of you, expanding that sphere around you. And this is your safe space. This is your alchemical container. This is where we can practice reality crafting and shape our reality. Imagine a beautiful golden smile spreading across your heart now as we welcome the cacao diva into our practice. It might feel nice for you to gently move your head left to right, slowly, not too far. 
just drawing that smile. And now as you release your hand from your heart, take it to your lower belly. And imagine that smile beaming into the sphere around you. Bring your chin neutral. Welcome this essence of harmony, of compassion. Of pure, unconditional love. You can imagine that the light of source is pouring down through our sun, bathing you. And it's also rising up from the core of the earth, feeding your roots. And in your heart it meets, and this smile that beams out into your sphere is you, your unique essence. Beaming out into the world, energizing your whole world. And sending love and light to all those around you. You're glowing. Oh, just enjoy it. Enjoy feeling this shift in you. And Mama Cacao is a cacao diva, spirit, plant medicine, is said to restore balance and harmony in the hearts of humanity, in the world when it seems the world is out of balance. So what is balance? Well, we've been living in a dualistic reality for a long time. We're moving now into uniarchy, into beyond duality, into oneness. So there's a different balance required now. This balance is Allowing the masculine and the feminine frequencies within us to truly support our creativity. What we desire to experience. Each of us sovereign in our own energy. So welcome this idea of connecting to compassion as a gift to yourself and the world. We're just going to purify our connection to the earth with the sound ma. Purify our connection to source through our soul chakras with the sound om. <clears throat> and activate the divine matrix, the divine heart grid through the sound an. These are the templates for creating paradise earth, heaven on earth. Earth chakra, soul chakra, heart chakra. Deep breath in. Ma. Ma. Let those sounds reverberate into your energy field. Call in your guides, teachers. All of us call in our guides and teachers with the purest vibrations of love and light. Mother, Father, Divine. <clears throat> our beautiful star families, our ancestors, our angels and archangels, the elementals, the rainbow dragons and the unicorns are here. And the leprechauns, funnily enough. A few little sprites and fairies. So welcome what feels right for you into your energy field. And for all of us that co-create here in this space, either live or in the replay, we have a beautiful sphere surrounding all of us that dissolves, that releases us into our own individual frequencies once the co-creation is complete. 
call in the energy of the new moon in Libra, which will be birthed on Sunday. To really illuminate this path of neutrality, the divine human path ahead for us, our unique internal harmony. When you feel ready, very gently drop your chin to your chest. Take one more deep breath in and send your breath down your arm. You can bring the other hand to the cup as well to your beautiful sacred liquid. Bring all of this beautiful energy which is connected to into what you are drinking. If you can hear the rain near you or my rain around me, you can imagine this is like a a downpour of stardust, a golden shower of stardust, just blowing down for us to receive. And gently come back when you're ready. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. So I'm doing something a little different today, and that is combining what I would usually put into a workshop um, when I, I used to do re religiously, very consistently equinox and solstice gatherings, uh, ceremonies and reflections. And it just felt really important to include this as part of the new moon co-creation. So you can get a taster of what we actually do in our coaching programs. And I just wanna say, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for subscribing, hitting the notification button and liking. Please do head over to the Starpiece Facebook page and join our community there because we're all here as bringers of this new dawn. And if you're on Starpiece, please head over to Rosie Glow on YouTube and do all of the notification subscribing stuff. It just helps us to expand and to be the way showers that we are. I'm eternally grateful to you for that. So have your notebook, have your pen, keeping an eye on time. As I said, I wanted to pull a few cards today just that reflect where we are in terms of the cycle of the year. And I'm going to ask you a couple of questions so that you can really get your vibration right. So first of all, one thing that's important for everybody to understand is this connection between microcosm, our earthly experience, and macrocosm, what's going on in the cosmic frequency. So it's beyond our solar system, beyond our galaxy, even our, our universe, but the cosmic frequencies. And... I talk about Star Peace. I started a movement called Star Peace. You can check that out on starpeaceconsciousness.com. But essentially, what's that all about? <laughs> it's about bringing peace to the earth, right? And then how do we create peace on earth? Well, first of all, we need to create it as a vibration in ourselves. Many of us struggle with the idea of peace because we think it's going to be boring, right? We've been taught, trained to believe that drama and stress is the way to be. But you can be thrilled in a way that doesn't mean you're scared or terrified. So we have a place for every one of our amazing frequencies of emotion. It's not about bypassing any of them, but choosing what your midline is. What is the frequency that you want to surf? And so this concept of what a personal paradise is really needs a lot more energy than we give it time for, because most of us are so busy wanting to help others, save the world, help do something to make things change. But we don't realize the key change is inside our vibration. If we change that, we change everything in the fastest possible way. So you may have seen that we've been recently putting out an invitation to connect to my website through the six steps for co-creating heaven on earth or paradise earth. And these are Bruce Lipton's steps. OK, they're in his book here, The, the Honeymoon Effect. And what was really amazing for me as I went to spend a couple of days with him this month was that actually I have six steps, too. And <laughs> there's two more steps than he's got here and one is activating your soul consciousness the other is surrendering to that soul consciousness so putting your soul in control and surrendering to it and this is this is what i mean about being ahead of the curve it's 5d 6d 7d frequency and it's just not the mainstream as a little example at the moment the current idea around female empowerment and i, you know, I have to speak to this is actually a manipulation of our sexual energy. I'm seeing it a lot. I'm seeing it a lot in coaches. I'm seeing it a lot in those who are putting stuff out on socials. And it's it's actually not a resolved feminine frequency. Now, I don't just work with the feminine. I don't just work with the masculine. I believe we're here now to unify and move into, you know, 
inner masculine and feminine being resolved to meet the needs of the divine child so that's what today's session is about i am divine harmony i am a divine human divine human activation and stepping into letting the dramas go and actually coming into the space where you can really own what you want and need and work out whether it's coming from a, a, a pain body an unresolved issue in your life or whether you're actually downloading the true desires of your soul frequency your higher self so let's ask, let's answer this question first what is it you don't want more of in your life okay just write that question down what is it you don't want more of in your life what are you done with what are you fed up with because our um, the energy of the equinox allows us to see very clearly. You know, I've seen very clearly <laughs> there's certain boundaries I need to put in place because I'm not prepared to put up with certain outcomes anymore. So it's up to me to look at my way of showing up in the world and in my business and go, OK, how can I shift things so that that isn't occurring in the future? And it is actually about being more boundaried, which if you are a people pleaser, most of us are. It's really hard to do that because you don't like getting people's backs up or making them feel uncomfortable or upset. But our growth doesn't come from being comfortable. It comes from being challenged. So a uh, paradise earth pioneer, a divine human leader, all of you lot, basically, you know, we grow the most from getting uncomfortable, seeking and reaching for something we truly want, getting uncomfortable, going through the process of mastering it and then stabilizing there before we ask what's next. And there's always something more as we reconnect with source. So that's the first question. Now, this is all part of my co-creation process. It's called reality crafting. And when we do a co-creation meditation, as I share with you here in these spaces, you're getting a taster of what's possible. If you haven't cleared the cloud storage that keeps taking you back to what you know, you're only getting a taste. You can't allow it to truly stick because it requires some much deeper processing, which is what Fearless, Loved Up and Free to Me is about. If you haven't yet found out that we're relaunching it as Fearless 2.0, I'll make sure we put the link in so you can check that out and book a call with me if you are interested because we're getting going 12th of October. It's go, 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 go. Um, so how do we resolve ourselves so that we can go from what we don't want to what we do want? Well, it's a simple exercise. If you know what you don't want, then from that you can work out roughly what you do want. So write down the things you don't want. Don't go into detail, just simple things you don't want any more of in your life. And then from there, flip it around and it will tell you what you do want. How do I not want to feel? will tell you how I do want to feel. And this is really important, the feeling bit, okay? Because when we want to create our reality, we do it through a combination of internal skills. One is cultivating the feeling of already having it. And if we are visually, um, internally visually turned on as it were <laughs> um, so you, your clairvoyant um, activation is there and you'll be able to see and sense a bit of an image that like excites and delights you that you want to align with some of us just don't have that visual so I don't want you to stress about that just ask for a symbol that represents it and in particular what are the color frequencies that are associated with that feeling vibration for you don't go looking on YouTube. Don't go looking on Google. Color for happiness. Your color for happiness will come from inside of you. This is this whole thing about stopping looking outwards first, checking inwards first. That's what allowed me to truly become confident in my gifts. It's taken me a very long time to realize my capacity to see things is like there compared to where a lot of teachers' consciousness is. And that's why I coach coaches and therapists and teachers and creatives and those who are in the entertainment industry to shift where they're creating from, okay? So first question, what don't I want, tells me the second question, what I do want. And then the third question is, how does it feel? Now, from there, we then, and you're getting your colors, your images, et cetera. From there, we then go to my other question. And this is a question, one, to ask yourself. And then the, the second question, it, well, it's the same question, but ask those who love you the most. They could be your partner, could be your siblings, could be your friends. They need to know your family members, though. So the first question is, ask you, how do I feel I am just like my mum? How do I feel I am just like my dad? Okay. And just 
write the questions down. You might get some immediate answers, but if you don't, don't worry about it. Again, I can give you a personal example. I'm getting, I, I love being more vulnerable in public presently because I, I hope it gives you all the courage to go, we all have this stuff going on. It's what we do with it that matters. So when I asked myself this question, it was actually quite emotional. And when I thought about my dad, I was like, oh, for my dad, you know, there's always something more important than the family. He's always firefighting some cause, you know, in one perspective, it's lovely because he's an animal lover and environmentalist, but there was never any energy for the home, for the partner, for the children. There was always something more important outside of the house to be involved in. So I got the message, I'm not important, right? I'm not that valuable. I'm not that important. I can't be that important because it, daddy keeps going away. When it comes to mum, now my mum had her own stuff going on, right? So she came from a lower income family. She wasn't that well educated, but she was smart and had amazing common sense. And this thing was going on for her where she had to constantly improve herself. So she was always doing a course, French, upholstery, um, all sorts of stuff before she got into her spiritual stuff. And I was like, hey, kid here, give me some attention. So I felt pretty invisible in my childhood and my teenhood. And I felt like I wasn't that important and what I wanted didn't really matter. It's like being ignored. So this has showed up in my life in many different ways. But basically, it is really tied in with my sense of self-worth. So just saying this to trigger things for you. The next part of this question, maybe ask a sibling, but promise you won't fall out with them about this. Ask a partner or a friend who knows you knows your family as in siblings and parents and ask them please tell me I won't be offended how am I just like my brother my sister my mum my dad what is it you you see about me that I would say no way and hear it okay because you're going to hear your internal judgments with the first part of this question about yourself and what you're worth and the second one you see your blind spots now, this is really important because this is all part of subconscious resistance. When you decide you want something, you start creating that reality as a feeling vibration. Everything that says you can't have it because of X, Y, Z, which is your limiting beliefs that you have been conditioned by, will show up. And it's learning how to deal with that. That's so important. So today we're going to work now with bringing in these frequencies we're going to simply ask what is it I want what is my current idea version of a personal paradise we can change it every day if we want but I wouldn't recommend that at least stick with something for a month see where it takes you and then move on and then we're going to co-create it so just whilst you are um, mulling those questions over I want to give you an example of what I mean presently about the evolution of our concepts of the divine masculine and feminine. Now, I don't think it's escaped anyone's notice that very recently the passing of Queen Elizabeth II had occurred, right? And she was a reigning monarch for 70 years. And the reason she actually came to be queen is because when her father died, her, his brother abdicated from the throne because he fell in love with a commoner, a divorcee, Mrs. Wallace. And so he couldn't actually take the throne. He had to make a choice between duty and desire. So he chose desire and desire cost him his duty, his throne, right? In comes Elizabeth. Now that's the punishment in the patriarchal paradigm, right? On one level for actually not being able to reconcile that our duty can be our desire, our desire can be our duty, it's how we work with it, it was not accepted. Roll on, Queen Elizabeth takes to the throne, makes a commitment to reign until her death, essentially, and she has kind of been an emblem of the feminine, as you can think of Maggie Thatcher as well as a good example, which basically has represented the emotionally unavailable woman because she, she is available to her duty, but not to her family, right? You could say family is duty, but it's more about the emotional availability that isn't present as a mother, as a nurturer, because of this sense of a greater duty. Roll back to what I was saying about my dad, right? So one of the things that's very 
sort of known about her is her commitment to God and feeling like she is, you know, here as a representative of, of divine rule. But what God? We're talking about a patriarchal God, a concept of a Christian God. And this is the, if you like, the essence of the, the feminine in power during the patriarchal times. There is a sense of being subservient to a masculine concept of the divine. And again, you could potentially suggest some might say that she loved her horses and her doggies more than she loved her children and her family. Um, there's lots more to this. I'm being quite, you know, generalist in how I say it. But now as her son takes over, if you think about Charles's story, you know, he married for duty. He was in love with someone else. But as lovely as Princess Diana is or was, he married her for duty. That was what was expected of him. He followed what was expected of him. And yet his heart won out and he ended up actually, you know, causing the terrible things that happened to then be with his, his current partner, the Duchess. And actually here he is now coming in, perhaps as a more resolved masculine. I'm just looking at archetypes here and saying, well, he had to face his truth by following his desire. He had to face his truth, create a ripple in what was the accepted order of things. And yet now he's coming back in and he has someone that is integrate duty and desire. So the evolution that comes about through us, well, growing in consciousness and recognizing it's not either or, we can't cut bits of us off and be sovereign. We have to claim every aspect of our being. And if you're not quite sure what sovereign means, look it up. There are different things that it means, but, you know, supreme power to rule the kingdom within. Let's start there because I don't do anything with anyone without aligning with the highest good of all and the win, win, win. I do not believe power is something that we play with without being truly aware of the impact that us reclaiming our power has on, on others. It's really important. Otherwise we get into manipulating power and we've been going through a whole load of that for thousands of years. So we're clearing that. Okay, so I wanna thank, uh, Ray, uh, no, not Rachel, I wanna thank Sarah Louise because she did a little, um, commentary on that which really got me excited and she's also the one who came up with the term uniarchy she's a very clever wordsmith is our lovely Sarah so thank you darling okay so we're basically going to do a few cards if anyone has any comments they would like to share for those of you who are live please put them in the comments box I'm now going to work with the cards that are our four cards to work with for the next three months and then we're going into our co-creation so as we are here at the, at the September equinox 2023, two, <laughs> I'm ahead of the curve, 2022. And we are aware that we are evolving concepts of the masculine and the feminine within us and in our collective psyche. What does it mean to be a strong woman leader, a strong man leader, a strong neither man nor woman leader, androgynous leader? What does it mean to be a divine human leader, regardless of gender? And how can we rule supreme and align with the most optimal path that creates the most balance and harmony in our lives, allows us to operate from a space of divine neutrality. Moving beyond this concept of duality into oneness. And co-create the change we wish to see in the world by claiming more of what we truly desire for ourselves. This new moon and Libra energy, what insights can we receive now from our higher self consciousness, our soul consciousness? Okay, so the heart of the matter. <laughs> Owning the inner rebel. Let's just see, if we get this lighting better for we. Okay, so this one here is the indigo frequency. So many of us have identified as being indigos, certainly earlier in our lives. We were actually doing something in my private membership around loving our inner team. 
So this is in order for us to really unify the masculine and the feminine and the inner child frequencies within us, we need to own our inner teen and the role our inner teen has played in that. And that again is something I work deeply with in my coaching work. So the block to owning the rebellious voice and not like um, being ruled by it, but owning the voice of rebellion within us and harnessing the power of rebellion to create positive change, to have the most impact in this world for the highest good of all. What is the block? What is it we're facing? <laughs> we're not unified. Just trying to see if you can actually get this. This is the peridot flame. And a bit easier there. So this, do, 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 there you go. This flame is basically a couple united in the peridot frequencies. And this is our inner masculine, inner feminine, um, not separate, but fully united within us. This is effectively the twin flame frequency. But here's the deal. The twin flames inside of you. It's not someone that's gonna come and be your other half. Your twin flame frequency is inside of you. It, it's always coming from source. It emits out and then whoever is the best match for you to align with that comes forward. The twin flame overlays over the human. I hate to burst people's bubbles when they're endlessly looking for their twin flame, but seriously, like save you a lot of time. And you know, as far as abstract terms of divine masculine, my husband is the divine masculine embodied. And um, I trust myself as the divine feminine embodied. And I believe there are other units here, <laughs> Lucy Amisan <laughs> and others who um, could say the same. Okay, it's really important we make it real and not woo-woo and out there and unattainable. It is real. It's very real. So the here and now, how we unify our inner masculine and feminine. Just coming through. We dream weave, my friends. This is what we're doing. This beautiful being is on a bridge. We create a bridge from where we have been to where we want to be. She's holding like a sphere that looks like the earth, right? In fact, it is. And she's basically holding the vision of what she wants to create and moving from the heart. It's at the heart level, this ball. You won't be able to see it with the lighting, but it's at the heart level. So this is really about allowing yourself to be divinely inspired and learning to turn everything you intend into its highest octave, okay? Everything you desire, what's, what's the best that can come from this? It's that kind of energy. And this leads us to the resolve and the infinite possibilities. So the resolve and the infinite possibilities. What happens as we allow ourselves to dream? It could be no other card than this. Okay. It's quite annoying that I can't actually show this to you the way I want. Can you see this is a cup? Just wondering where that light's actually coming from. There you go. Okay. So this is a golden chalice with all these beautiful colors of the rainbow flowing out. This is, from my point of view, the united family, solar plexus to heart bridge that allows the total flow of all that we desire. Okay, so just seeing if you can see that. There you go. And then this one was the dreamer. You can see this little blue thing here, which is a sphere of the world at her heart. Okay, I'll try and take some photos of these and actually put them up on the Star Peace page as well so you can have a look at them. And if you like them, they come from Leslie Sloan. They're phenomenal cards and I have plenty of them in stock if you're in the UK. Otherwise, I also have a link so you can purchase from the US. So we're going to do this now. I don't think I've had any comments. Let's get on. So if you want to rub your hands together, if you need to Get up and just have a little wiggle of your bum, please do. Just get yourself nice and yummy. And I'll say this before we go into the co-creation, we're gonna put a little link to uh, book a call with me if you would like to find out more about Fearless 2.0. I'm running it as a six month program. It's a 10th of the price of what it would cost to actually work with me for five months, one-to-one. -one. And uh, it's your opportunity to work with me directly because I haven't been running this program for a while personally as the coach. I have some wonderful coaches who are working with me. 
but I will be involved in every stage of this with you. So if you actually want to get on board now, you're going to save yourself a couple of grand as well, because it would have been seven and a half grand for the six month course. It's five, 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 five. And we've got loads of bonuses that we're putting in, but we're stripping away everything you don't need. So you've just got an arsenal of the key tools you need to keep creating your reality in alignment with divine will rather than your ego. So your higher self rather than your ego. Honestly, I can't say enough about it. Just check up out the testimonials and they're consistent. Eight years of consistency and developing this to bring it into its absolute okay where it is now. So everyone who's a RISE member is getting the update as well. And that's my joy and excitement to share that as a gift to you all. So let's do this. Rubbing your hands, having a little shake, relaxing your shoulders, and then bringing your hands to your heart center. Take a moment just to center yourself again. And consciously take a journey from your head down into your heart. And from your heart, Send your breath down your arms and down your legs. And invite now your higher self-consciousness into your heart. So please repeat out loud after me. I am all that is. I am the one self I am. I am that I am. I am the source of my creations. I am the creator of my reality. I am a multi-dimensional being of love and light. I am the creation. I am putting my soul in control. I am sovereign. I am divine human. I am divine harmony. I am the Divine Mother. I am the Divine Father. I am the Divine Feminine. I am the Divine Masculine. I am the Divine Team. I am the Divine Rebel. I am the divine child. I am a miracle. And miracles happen all around. I am magical. And magic happens all around. I am giving myself permission to receive what I desire. I am allowed to succeed. I am meeting my own wants and needs. I am that I am. I am divine uniarchy. I am divine neutrality. 
I am source all that is. I am that I am. So now release your hands down, just let your palms rest facing upwards, wherever they're comfortable for you. Really root your tailbone down, know that you are plugging in. So just before we get into the feeling state, give yourself a chance to anchor into your center. Rooting down through your sitting bones, extending through the crown of your head. And finding that internal balance between the left and the right side of your body, the front and back of your body. So your inner being is holding you up, lifting you, grounding you. You can connect your thumb to your fourth finger, the one next to your little finger, if you wish. Nice grounding and energizing mudra. Okay, so remembering we are in our sphere of compassion. And I ask the question now, what is your personal paradise feeling like? In order to get that feeling, remember you know what you don't want, you've got clear on that. So what do you want more of in your life? What do you want? to experience that seems somehow to elude you, to escape you. It can be financial, romantic, do with your body, your health, your career, your sole purpose. Whatever it is, give yourself a moment. What is it you want more of? You're in your sphere and allowing your physiology to respond. If you're visual, imagine you can see a version of you celebrating what you desire on a screen in front of you. If you're not visual, you might want to speak it out loud and notice your body's vibration frequency as you say it. Give you a moment. Give yourself a chance to consider various areas of your life where there have been limitations, how you'd like them to look instead. Say it out loud, visualize it, do whichever or both. I'm so happy and grateful that I am so enjoying, I am celebrating. Beautiful. So start to feel how your body responds and ask for the colors or the symbols. If you are into symbolic images that represent this attainment, this achievement. There's a feeling state that gets activated in you. What is it? 
Like literally when you hit it, you're smiling. It's like, yeah, that's it. Maybe there's a scent, a smell associated with this as well. Amazing. Just keep going with that. Feel yourself expanding. You might see your body is glowing. You've got a sphere around you that's glowing. And then there's a light body between your sphere and your physical body. So for most, it will look like a six-pointed star. Some who are integrated masculine and feminine, which really shows up in the quality of your relationship with your partner and yourself. It's a thriving relationship. We tend to have a diamond-shaped light body. And you can imagine now your soul chakra is above your crown, about three foot above, and it's starting to spin. And this crescent moon above, which hasn't yet been born, but it's the balance frequency, the harmony, divine harmony frequency, starts to send its moon dust, which is like a platinum frequency had the solar frequency, the golden frequency before. Now we're bringing in this lunar platinum frequency, like a platinum shower of stardust down around you, down through you. Keep allowing your soul chakra to spin. It will allow more of this energy to flow. It's going down to the core of the earth and also spreading from your body down to the crystalline grid around the earth. Okay, keeping that excitement, that delight, that sense of feeling thrilled. Now create a small sphere in front of your face. And it's a replica of the sphere around you. If you're new to a sphere of compassion, it's made of trillions of little spheres all spinning on their own axis. Now notice the color frequencies that have been coming through for you and the feeling frequencies they're associated with. Joy, delight, peace, celebration. This is unique to you. Okay, and now let's allow complete and irreversible release of all major resistance to our intentions, our desired outcomes, our physical, etheric, emotional, mental, and astral bodies, from our cellular, molecular, atomic, and subatomic memory, from the waves and particles of our quantum field and photon stream. And just now breathe deeply through your nose as though you're gathering all these little objections within your body, mind, spirit complex to what you desire and breathe them into the sphere in front of you. So I see them as all these little metal filings that gather from a microscopic level into my heart so that I can then breathe them out into the sphere in front. You might see these as cobwebs, as smoke, as dust. But we're releasing now the resistance that comes from the stories we've made up about our mum and dad and about ourselves based on how mum and dad treated us. About what we feel we're worth. Because maybe we don't get the external validation we desire from the world around us. Just keep breathing in, gathering all the resistance to your center. And then as you breathe out, breathe it out into the sphere in front. 
and let that sphere grow as much as it needs to to contain all of this objection to desire. Might take five breaths, might take 10. Just give yourself a moment. And you'll know you're there because what you're breathing out of your mouth will start to become pure, clear, bright light. And in particular, breathe out that people don't want what I've got. People don't want what I am. People don't like me. Whatever that means to you. It's all part of that external validation story. So breathing in, releasing all attachment to getting that validation from outside of us and making a commitment to receive it internally. And now as the pure clear flame comes through, just let your sphere spin super fast. So it acts like a vacuum to keep drawing from you. All that says it has to be difficult. You can't have what you want. You're not allowed. Mum said this. Dad said this. And please allow yourself to release into the sphere as well. Any outdated concepts within you, your body, mind, spirit complex, your bloodlines, of the masculine, of the feminine as a leader, as strong, as powerful. And we call now the flame of infinite love in, which is a pure, clear flame. That's the clear quartz energy I was talking about. Just imagine it's flowing through your core down to the heart of the earth, and then from your heart into the sphere in front. And it's loving up all of that density in there all of that stuckness old energy this beautiful flame spins like a mini tornado in the sphere and it's lifting the vibe of all that density all those particles of density into particles of light until you're left with a crystal ball So you're looking at this sphere of light that you can see through. And as that sphere becomes pure and clear, now start to breathe the colors and the feeling vibrations you connected to earlier into the sphere. It's yours, it's unique. Just imagine you're calling them in. So if you're connecting to delight, call in the flame of delight. If you're call, connecting to joy, call in the flame of joy. If you're connecting to celebration or peace or love. Name the feeling frequency and the color that's coming. And then by well be more than one color. I'm working with three presently. As they go into the sphere, they create an image, perhaps of you, as the version of you that is already achieved, accomplished, experiencing what you desire. Enjoy witnessing this version of you. You are the observer now, the divine observing the divine. So observe this version of you, what's different in their lives? How are they showing up?
Oh, beautiful. Okay, so we're now going to anchor that before we step into it. So just repeat with me, anchor, lock and seal. Recalibrate, align, balance and harmonize. The graceful and gentle. Integration and full expression. In our physical reality and all relevant dimensions of our being. All right, now imagine a rainbow bridge extending from your heart into the sphere. It's like a travelator that you step onto and it brings the sphere around you, it expands to fill your whole reality. So the sphere that you were originally in is now being informed by the sphere you've just created. All of these energetic frequencies are filling up your energy field. And you become this version of you in the sphere where you embody the symbol that you've seen. Just let yourself be in that vibrational frequency. What does that version of you feel like in the body? Let yourself move because breath, sound and movement are what gets our cellular memory shifting from where we don't want to be to where we do want to be. And so as you move and you breathe and you sound as you need, you are embodying these frequencies, drawing them into the cellular, molecular, atomic, subatomic levels, the waves and particles of your quantum field and photon stream. And now reach your arms up above your head and just gently Press the heel of the hand up towards the ceiling, palms up, like you're pushing away any resistance, any glass ceiling, it's growing into a fuller version of yourself. And then bring the hands back down and around to your heart center. And see yourself as the center of your new universe, your new world, your new galaxy new solar system. Everything is revolving around your new frequency now. You are the center of your world. I am the center of my world. So commanding now an axitonial alignment with our divine human selves, with I am divine harmony. I am the sacred balance of all that is. Tuned to the frequency of love, trust, and joy. Feel that for your body's response. Now I command this process continues until completion. Anchor, anchor, anchor. Recalibrate, align. Balance and harmonize. The graceful and gentle. Integration and full expression. In all dimensions of my being. And all space and time. Including my physical reality now. Thank you. Thank you. Feel your centeredness, feel your sovereignty. And we remind ourselves that we're co-creating in alignment with the highest good of all and the win-win-win in everything. So we intend everything that we desire for ourselves is raised up to its highest frequency and aligned with the highest good of all and the win-win-win for everyone and everything. So it is and so it shall. When you're ready, very gently bring yourself back. Breathe yourself into this moment. 
As you come back, just really breathe down into your pelvic floor. Ah. Just a little reminder for everybody as you're coming back that you've connected to some super high vibrations, okay? And as you bring in higher frequency, you have to clear density, which is what we just did. This is part of this whole process of living your life as the architect of your life, right? And the builder and the energizer. So this is beyond manifesting. This is beyond law of attraction. In order to have this level of power, we need to know how to use it wisely. That's why we're all ascended masters in training. And we always surrender our desires to the highest good of all and the win-win-win. Otherwise, those old stories, power corrupts, absolute, absolute power corrupts, absolutely start to come in because we are, the new world is about cooperation, collaboration. It's about um, being part of the collective as an individual, unique spark. And we recognize that we're both affected and we affect the collective through our vibration. So we show up as the best we can in any moment. I'm just gonna check in one moment. Just checking in with some of the liveies. <laughs> um, when you go this deep and you're bypassing your conscious mind, it can feel like you need to drop off to sleep. And I don't mind that at all. I encourage you to let that happen. Make sure you're comfortable, your spine is straight because it's bypassing the conscious mind objection that's so important. Initially with these deep frequencies, very often it's easy to nod off. So just allow that. And the, the key is the repetition. So definitely do this one again. I mean, this all, this is, this is the one to come back to for the next three months until we have some time to co-create the winter solstice or the, the solstice, the December solstice, wherever you are in the world. So thanks for that. Just make sure you are safe and you've got your spine supported. Okay, so again, just checking in and recognizing the beauty of this kind of experience is you take it from being a mind idea to a physical embodiment, which we need to have, right? Because then we recognize when something goes on in the world around us and those feeling vibrations are activated in us, that's when we can go, oh, this is aligned because it's triggering this state, this feeling state. And that just really gives you that sense. You remember when I said external validation doesn't really exist for us that are creating the new earth paradigm? Well, it does as an internal feeling vibration when you actually encounter something or someone that is part of you co-creating this frequency in the world. So that's the difference. You're not going to find it on Google. You're not going to find it in a book. But you will say you stumble across something. You go, oh, that's bringing all those feelings up. I need to make a connection with this person. Or you meet someone and you're like, oh, OK. Right. So that helps us to see in the dark. And that's part of the excitement of this work. So moving from head to body, body to heart, heart to soul. That's the journey we're on. Thank you for that um, sharing. So what happens if you are very in your head and actually you know you're not connecting to the feeling vibrations this was something very true for me as i started to connect to higher frequency energies is that i would chase thoughts i'd go i'd see an image and then kind of try and see what happens beyond that and happens beyond that and if you don't have a very strong connection with feeling based sensation connected to imagery then if you once you see something you visualize something that you truly desire you're like yeah then sort of pause there, like you're taking a snapshot and ask yourself, how does this make me feel? And typically for those of us who aren't so comfortable with feeling things, we'll, we'll feel first of all that, oh, but I can't have that. I won't have it. It's never gonna be available to me. We'll feel our resistance to having it before actually really feeling like we have it. So it's in the slowing down. It's like, what would it feel like to me? This was in my life now. The objections will come up, but if I let myself lean into the idea that this is already here, what does it feel like? And, you know, I'll cut it out. I'll, I'll cut you some time here. Relief, expansion, you know, let yourself keep going. And what else? And what else? To kind of get deeper into the feeling states rather than the thought states. It's going to help you make that connection. 
So as I bring this session to its conclusion, I do invite you just to use the comments wherever you are, whatever platform we've got this on for you to, to share your experience. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to let me know. Remember that if you're joining me live, you come into an inner space where I get to interact with you. So look out for the uh, invitation to do that because we connect through Zoom and then we bring everything up to the public afterwards. I'm wishing everybody a beautiful, beautiful new moon in Libra, which as you know, you'll feel this energy really come in on Sunday. At this point now, we're kind of going towards the dark of the moon. So we tend to feel more flat in energy, insecure, questioning, doubtful, all that kind of thing. So bring that all up because that's the resistance you want to clear. It's really good just to get it to the surface. And again, just a little reminder to all of you that um, Fearless 2.0 is literally like the divine matrix upgrade. So if you want to stop fear and doubt running your life and actually learn to create from your higher self rather than your pain body, this is the journey. And it is a journey that once you go on it, you've done it. You've unplugged from your early life conditioning, pre-birth conditioning, you plug into your higher self-consciousness, and then it's about just working with that and allowing this phase of your life, which is your soul blueprint, to start to unfold in front of you. I can't say it enough times. We are here to create a new earth paradigm. We cannot create it from an old world mindset. It doesn't happen from here. It happens from here as we bring our soul light in and we use all of the skills we have to access our multidimensional selves and our capacity to utilize our extrasensory perception and basically superpowers to create the world that we would like to by creating our first world, our inner world first and our personal world first. That's your personal paradise that leads to creating paradise on earth. We are all Paradise Earth pioneers. We are the architects, the builders, and the energizers of this new Earth paradigm. Please check out starpeaceconsciousness.com. Join our community on Facebook and check the link about Fearless 2.0. We'll put both the invitation into uh, find out more about Bruce Lipton's six steps and also the link directly to book a call with me because now is the time, my friends. We are basically at the crest of change and I'm ready for you and I know you're ready for me so let's go so much love thank you for all of the showing up that you do and the beautiful work you do in this world thanks for the subscribing the liking and joining everything so much love and I'll see you in two weeks time for the full moon personal healing world service light language transmission so when we do the really deep resistance work clearing with the full moon energy which will be in Aries Lots of love. Take care.